everyone. I am Dr. Vaishnavi, your ENT educator, and today we are here to discuss some common instruments that we use in ENT. So it's very important to know the name of the instrument and some of the uses. So in examination, you might be given an image-based question where you might have to identify the name of this instrument. So the first instrument that you see here is called as a Jobson Horn probe. It has got a ring curette also. So one end has got a curette. So you can see one end has got a curet and other end is just having a serrated edge or a flat edge. So this is used for removal of wax. Sometimes also it is used for removal of foreign body. It is also used whenever you want to palpate and probe the external auditory canal. It is also used for identifying or origin of polyps. So you will go around the polyp to see from where exactly it is coming if it is in the external auditory canal. It is also used sometimes for oral toileting. So you can put a wisp of cotton onto the other end. And then you can just roll cotton over it and clean the external auditory canal. So this is the use of Jobson horn probe with a ring curette. So this instrument that you see is called as the Jobson horn probe with the ring curette. Now let us see the next instrument. The next instrument that we commonly use is called as the tuning fork. This is called as a Hartmann's tuning fork. Now tuning, com tuning forks come in different frequencies, but the most common tuning fork that we use in ENT is the 512 hertz tuning fork. So this 512 hertz tuning fork is used for identifying hearing loss to differentiate conductive from sensory neural to uh, to, uh, to do other tuning fork tests for identifying patients who are malingering. So this has got various purposes, but basically it has to do with hearing and its function. The next one that you see is called as the Siegel's pneumatic speculum. So you can see it has got an oral speculum. This goes into the external auditory canal. It has got a eyepiece through which you can visualize the tympanic membrane. It has got a rubber tubing. This rubber tubing is connected to the rubber bulb. So the rubber tubing is connected to the rubber bulb. Now, how do we use this particular instrument? How do we use and what are the uses of this particular instrument? So whenever we want to use this instrument, you will place it in the external auditory canal. So if this is your external ear, the seagull's oral speculum is first inserted into the ear. So this is the speculum. Through the eyepiece, you can see the tympanic membrane. So first use is to visualize the tympanic membrane. It can, the, that is the first use, that is to visualize the tympanic membrane. So tympanic membrane visualization. This is the first use of the Siegel's oral speculum. Now I told you it has also got a rubber tubing to which there is a rubber cuff attached. Now if you want to say disperse some powdered medication into the external auditory canal, you can just place it in the outer portion. Now when you inflate the cuff, the drug will get dispersed and will reach the tympanic membrane as well. So it is used for dispersing or dispensing powdered medication into the external auditory canal and the tympanic membrane. So the second use is to instill powdered medication into the external auditory canal.
this is the second use now what is the third use it is used for performing a test which is called as fistula test so the third use is fistula test so whenever you increase the pressure in the external auditory canal this pressure is transmitted to the middle ear through the tympanic membrane but normally when there is no communication between the middle ear and the inner ear the pressure will not get transmitted to the inner ear any further so you the patient will not experience any vertigo or nystagmus that is what will happen in normal individuals but if there is a communication the pressure can now go inside to the inner ear stimulating the inner ear to cause vertigo and nystagmus so this is also used for performing the fistula test so one it is used for visualizing the tympanic membrane two it is used for instilling powdered medication into the external auditory canal three it is used for performing a fistula test so these are various uses of this siegel's pneumatic speculum so you can see this instrument again this is the oral speculum with the eye piece this is the rubber tubing this is the rubber cuff and you can get different sizes of the speculum based upon the external auditory canal of the patient this is again a similar instrument it is similar like your siegel's pneumatic speculum but here instead of using a uh, oral speculum we are using a otoscope so you can see this is the otoscope so the otoscope is used so this otoscope has a pneumatic attachment so this is the pneumatic attachment that gets attached to the otoscope so that you can do the same otoscopy and also visualize the movement of the tympanic membrane simultaneously so when you increase the pressure the tympanic membrane should vibrate and move if the tympanic membrane does not vibrate and move it means that there is a pathology in the middle ear so it is used for the same purposes also to visualize the movement of the tympanic membrane now this is called as simpson's oral syringe simpson's oral syringe is performed is used mainly to perform a procedure which is called as syringing so it is used for syringing so what is the meaning of syringing again in the external auditory canal say there is an impacted wax or an impacted foreign body say there is a wax or an impacted foreign body you will take this simpson's oral syringe and you are going to direct the current of water towards the posterior superior canal wall now this water will go and collect behind the foreign body or the wax and this will get expelled so it is used for syringing wax or foreign bodies now can we remove hygroscopic foreign bodies through this syringing we cannot remove hygroscopic foreign bodies now what is the temperature of water that you will do for use for syringing the temperature should be normal body temperature which is 37 degrees centigrade if you use water above this temperature or below this temperature it can result in caloric reaction so you will use the water normal body temperature which is 37 degrees centigrade now what should be the direction it should be towards the posterior superior canal wall so it should be towards the posterior superior canal wall okay this should be the direction of the uh, of the jet of water now when do you when is this procedure contraindicated so when is syringing contraindicated syringing is contraindicated whenever there is a perforation in the external auditory canal whenever there is a hygroscopic foreign body whenever the patient is having any cardiac issues because this can cause vasovagal syncope by stimulation of the arnold's nerve 
तो एनी कार्डियक पैथोलॉजी और इफ देर इज एनी इन्फेक्शन इन दर लाइक ओटाइटिस एक्सटर्ना टिपिकली इवन इन ओटाइटिस एक्सटर्ना एंड ओटोमाइकोसिस दिस इज कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड सो दीज आर दी कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन फॉर सिरिंजी सो द नेम ऑफ द सिरिंज दैट वी यूज टू परफॉर्म दिस सिरिंजिंग इज कॉल्ड एज सिमसन्स ऑरल सिरिंज Now look at this instrument. This instrument is called as Pollitzer's micro myringotome. What is the use of this Pollitzer's myringotome? It is used to perform a procedure which is called as myringotomy. So whether it is ASOM or SOM, we have learned the typical indications. When we want to make an opening in the tympanic membrane, we will use this myringotome. So typically antero inferior quadrant. you will make the opening so to make an opening in the tympanic membrane we use this myringotome so you can see the anterior edge is sharp through that we are going to make a hole or opening in the tympanic membrane the next in, in uh, instrument that you want to identify is the grommet what is a grommet grommet is a ventilating tube so this is a ventilating tube so grome is a ventilating tube between the external auditory canal and the middle ear so if this is your external auditory canal you place this grome to into the middle ear like this so till the eustachian tubal function has regained its normal normalcy or it is able to ventilate the middle ear to bypass that until that period of time you can use a grome now there can be temporary gromes permanent gromes so grome can be used for a temporary period of time for those who you think that the atelectatic ear is not going to happen but in those patients who whom have a collapse of the middle ear then you will have to use a permanent grome